Belfry. Thank you for being with us today for Mr. Feelgood's shoot and video and questionnaire. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. John. It's a real pleasure to meet you. <laughs> you spend too. the morning with you and have that laugh all day long, which is <laughs> contagious and just ama immediately makes me feel good. Um, I mean, really, I want to say congratulations as well, because you're a new dad of a daughter, four and a half weeks old, Matilda, mm -hmm. and you've got a hell of a schedule here, there, and everywhere as a very active, working actor. And you popped in here, and I hear you told us that you got to wake up with her and sort her out this morning. I did, yeah, yeah. I've been traveling a bunch the last few days, but this morning, um, I was really hoping she'd wake up before I had to leave the house, and she did. So I got to, you know, go in and pick her up out of her crib and went to change her diaper, and then she peed once the diaper was off. <laughs> which is like it's a scent on you it's like you're my dad yeah, yeah. she's like you're home dad um i was only away for two days but I, okay. I was going crazy but yeah yeah just to hold her this morning and feed her i mean it's it's absolutely incredible it, it's a beautiful thing oh it's a beautiful thing but you're also i've been looking at your work for a long time now and you started in theater you're out in new jersey and you were in a daytime drama for a long time, so you learnt your acting chops, I'm sure, very quickly. And, and then you went into independent films, and then you did Broadway, and then you've been sort of, I mean, you've been, you're in outer range at the moment with Josh um, Bro Brolin, Brolin mm -hmm. who you're shooting that in, well, I won't say what you're shooting that, but it's set in <laughs> Wyoming. And Love and Death, which looks bonkers and brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you work with David Fincher as well, which yeah. is incredible on Mank, yeah. uh, which is amazing. I worked with him many, many years ago on Did the you? George Michael Freedom video when he was just doing his first, wow. uh, his first uh, movie, The Alien. He was editing that. Wow. And then, but I mean, for me, um, what really grabbed me was, and what blew my mind was in Ozark, you're playing Ben Davis, which I'm sure was sort of a step towards, you know, uh, all these other opportunities because you were extraordinary in that film and you made us all sit back and you made us all feel ill, you made us all really root for you in a way because you, you, you seem to be in the characters you've, ch and the Banshee as well, the, the, the characters you've chosen are these guys who are everyday guys but at the same time they have such a well of darkness and suffering within them yeah and you manage to do it in a way that is believable and in a way elicits our empathy you know what i mean mm. so uh anyway it's a, it's a marvelous to meet you and to have you here oh thank you yeah ben, uh i mean ozark was was a very special job and it did it changed a lot of things and you know there's so much that goes into the soup of a successful job. Yeah. And so much of that is so far beyond yeah. your control. Yeah. Uh, you know, as an actor, really anyone, yeah. you know, it's such a team sport. And then even if everything's amazing, the script's amazing, the direction's amazing, all the actors are good, you know, people still have to watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know, do you? You really don't know. I mean, it's what we were talking about. It's about surrender. It's about giving up. You've got to let that go, haven't you? And hope and trust that yeah. the people who are around you, and I think you had an extraordinary team there, didn't you? Oh, for sure. Amazing. And that's Jason. part of what yeah. made the job yeah. so incredible, you know. Um, and, and for such an intense show, such a lovely, supportive, yeah. respectful yeah. set. You know, I got there in the third season and we'd be, yeah, I'd be like overhearing the crew talking about weekend plans oh, that really? they're making with each other. And I'm like, huh. you guys are still wow. hanging out Amazing. three years in and Amazing. filming nonstop. A real family and, yeah. affair. Beautiful. Well, today we're going to ask you our Mr. Feelgood 20 questions that are designed to get to the heart of who you are. Right. The first 15 are sort of, they, they, they delve quite deep and you can answer them however you wish. The okay. last five are a little bit more on the lighter side. So we'll start now with... Now you promise we'll stay in touch after this? I, I'm going to open I, up my heart I, to you. Can we at least be pen pals? I'm going to stalk you, so don't worry about it. Uh, so the first one, Tom Pelfrey, is who the fuck are you? <laughs> well, I'm Thomas Joseph Pelfrey. Uh, I was born and raised in New Jersey. Um, 
still trying to figure out who I am, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I life's changed a lot in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think acting and 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 doing the whole thing was was a a, a game changer and a lifesaver and uh, something to focus energy and passion into. And I think it kind of became how I identified myself. Mm -hmm. And I think at a certain point that ran out of road. Um, and I was feeling that, you know. And then I was doing a lot of work on myself. And the universe uh, introduced me to Kaylee, who's mm -hmm. my fiance. And everything changed. And, wow. And now I have a, a daughter and, you know, it's, there's the me that is an actor and mm -hmm. then, you know, that's just a little piece of the pie. Right on, right on, <laughs> right on. Fatherhood, it'll do that to you. Man. You learn to let go of the selfishness to some degree, the healthy to selfishness. To some degree. Yeah. 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 To some degree. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> how are you feeling right now? Really happy. Yeah. 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 I had a really nice day with you um, and Allison and e everybody here. Um, it, I, I, you know, Love and Death is is coming out and mm -hmm. there's been a lot of press lately and, and literally just yesterday I, I kind of had a bad experience. Um, and so to come here today in such a positive, supportive, fun, relaxed environment is really reassuring it's mm. like uh, it's kind of soul balm right now oh that's yeah. lovely to hear well i mean it no i know I you really do yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to know what it is but i don't want to dredge it up that was so bad yesterday because it's well i mean f i'll take accountability for the fact that i i love acting and i love work and i love preparing but the um, sometimes doing an interview, sometimes sometimes photo. I just don't quite feel comfortable. Right. Maybe back to your first question. Right. Who are you? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. maybe it's like, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm 10 different people and on any given day, you know, and so, um, so to take accountability for myself, I, I can, I can struggle with that a bit, but there's, uh, you know, there's not everybody's playing the same game, mm. you know? And, you. and that's why, that's when it can be a taxing. little taxing. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. So where did you grow up and what was it like? I grew up in Howell, New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, and it was amazing. I had great friends. It was kind of lower middle class, suburban. We were 15 minutes from the beach. We were 15 minutes from Six Flags Great Adventure. Mm. We all played all the sports. Um, all the guys from the neighborhood would come to our backyard because we had a pretty big one to play Nerf football, oh, tackle yeah, yeah, football yeah. in the oh, yard. Man. Yeah. We had a above ground pool. We would play pool volleyball. Right. Um, you know, God, I don't know if I hope kids still do it, but every day we were just outside, outside playing until the it. sun yeah. went down. Not on your game, not on the computer. No, although occasionally come inside and play James Bond Goldeneye, Ooh, okay. which was a good one. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what excites you? Steady. <laughs> <laughs> great writing. Yeah. Um, oh, God, I love great writing poetry. Um, do you like Rumi? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course, the Persian poet, of course. Ah. Yes. Rilke. Um, Rilke. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, you know, you go through these phases and I, I just was kind of feeling sad the other day and, and I was like, when was the last time I read a, yeah. a Rumi poem? Yeah. You know, along, along that line, just because you and I were kind of talking about surrender and mm -hmm. spirit, show me your tattoo. Um, I was talking to my therapist the mm -hmm. other day and he's a really super interesting, cool guy and we were talking about um, I, I took a class of his. He's, he's a Jungian analyst. Okay. And so he's teaching a, a, a Jungian class on 
the Bible stories through a Jungian analytic perspective. Sure. And there was a lot of interesting things that I took from it. But one of the coolest ones was he talked about the Sabbath, hmm. right? And talked about, so you're interpreting things through the, uh, non-literally, but like, is there an essence of wisdom that mm -hmm. we could extract mm -hmm. that we could, that could make our lives better in a real concrete sense? Sure. And he, he said that his interpretation of the Sabbath or how he took it was that it was just one in seven. Hmm. So we have six days of creation, mm -hmm. a day of rest. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, what if it doesn't have to be one day a week? What if it's just one hour out exactly. of every seven? Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? Well, Wouldn't that be something? And that's, and that's what he does. He's like, well, how many hours a day are you awake usually? Mm. 14, 15, 16. He's like, could you then take two hours each day? Oh, what a wonderful prospect or practice or discipline to yes. come into. See, I love that. I, yeah. I, love, I love those th things like that, thinking like that, like a creative way to get into yourself not in a selfish way but in yeah. the like yeah well also now we live in a society where we're just on the we're connected all the time we're mm -hmm. ambitious we're pushed to be successful in a certain kind of materialistic way we've got to be this by the time we're this etc etc and i think what we lack is the fact that it's really good to daydream yeah. it's really good to check out it's really good to get lost it's really good to unplug and it seems, I think we're going back towards it because we're all dying of stress and various diseases. But I think it's just, you know, to get into that space of, of surrender and of just, just daydreaming again, having time. Daydreaming and also understanding that, like, you can't, you can do whatever you want, but that it, it can be, I don't want to say dangerous, but you shouldn't externalize everything. Yeah. And, and in fact, I don't even know that you could. Right. But the idea that like something out there or someone out there is going to make you happy, yeah. something to have will yeah. make you fulfilled or accomplished. Yeah. Like we know through trial and error, you know, just through living life. And even if you'd never thought about this, I bet if you reflected on it right now, you'd say, oh, yeah, right. It's like the internal shifts, the internal, mm. where am I putting what's meaningful mm. and then that changes you you mm -hmm. know like I, I i don't know i've really found on my journey that it's 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 i know i'm stumbling mm. when i'm Looking blaming outside. other people yeah, yeah. or circumstances are yeah. not how i like yeah. it's like well, that does that doesn't matter well that's that's wisdom though that's maturity that's the road to wisdom because again it goes back to the accountability self accountability doesn't mm -hmm. it because in the end of the day you're born alone you go out alone and you've just got to deal with this thing which is you right yeah. and that's what we've all got to sort of be and and um you know acknowledge and i think the more we get in tune with that the better we are for ourselves and for those around us because we're being as authentic as we can be even though it's not very easy all the time right? yeah yes okay what scares you oh god um i mean the idea of death still scares me um uh Yeah, I, I, the, uh, I don't know if this would be scare, but the, the, the sort of, the, at times, melancholy sense of the awareness of the passage of time. Mm. You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about that recently. My daughter was born. I've never been more aware of four and a half weeks mm. passing, mm. you know, mm. like every day getting emotional which yeah. is no surprise but but then you think like well what is it when you're a kid mm. that feels like when you remember that that there was no time mm. Mm. you know and it, it, you start to think about maybe 
responsibilities we have or rituals that we've gotten into or just like losing touch with being present right you know because when yeah. you're a kid there's nothing really too much to hope i mean unfortunately probably for a lot of kids there is but if you're lucky like i was there's not too much to worry about there's right. not too much you're responsible for right and, right time I don't just know. passes yeah. yeah 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 um what is your proudest achievement my daughter yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to call her an achievement, though. <laughs> well, yeah, you will do as you learn. As, you, as she grows up and she becomes her own person and all the other stuff. It's, I think keeping your sanity in 20 years, we'll ask you that again. <laughs> okay. See how you are. <laughs> too, too early. They know they, where I come from in Yorkshire, they say you're not a man until you've had a daughter. Mm. They're different. I've got one and two sons and... Uh, it's a whole different ride. It's yeah. a whole different ride. It's a beautiful ride, but it's a, a, a different ride for sure. Yeah. So that's, that's, it is an achievement to have a child, to bring someone into the world with someone you love. It's oh, pretty amazing. So cool. It's amazing. It's so cool. What is the hardest thing you have ever done? <sighs> the hardest thing I've ever done. I mean, you know, just, just doing the, just doing the self work, mm. I guess, you know, I mean, like, there's a, there's a reason that there's things that we're not aware of. And, and there's a reason, I guess, that it's like, work on yourself, because it's, painful or hard or like it served you for so long to not be aware of it right you know and sort of in a strange way I feel like sometimes you become aware of things and that allows you a more to be a more whole human being right. and at the same time that new awareness can be a burden yes Right? Yes, of course, especially if you're used to doing something that, that has worked for you for a long time. It's like a mask or it's like a, it's a practice, isn't it, that kept, kept you safe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, something, it's something in there. I mean, there's been a lot of hard things that are, that are, that are um, outside of me, but, you know... My first dog, my my first dog that was mine, Sasha. Mm. Um, I got her right after my father passed away, and uh, putting her down. Yeah, was a. For three days, I thought I. I mean, I genuinely was worried for my own ability to like. I didn't think it was like carry on going to come back. Right. Like something felt like it got wow. lost. Yeah, I feel that. Feel yeah. that. Um, who was the who was your greatest mentor, and what did he or she teach you? Oh. Sasha, maybe. <laughs> right? That was, no, God wrong, bless you that know? dog, man. I have been very fortunate mm -hmm. in terms of mentors, teachers. Um, I my high school teacher changed my life. That's why I'm sitting here talking to you right now. It's the reason I'm an actor. Mm. Steve Kazakoff. Um, I had an amazing college professor, Kevin Kittle, mm -hmm. who I, I, I really, you come to realize, right, you get older and you become more aware and you're like, wow, he really shaped really? a lot of who I am, you know, a lot of... May I ask you, when did your father pass? I was 25. You were 25, okay. 25 years old, yeah. Um, so what did you, so your, so, but your father knew, obviously you knew your high school teacher and your college teacher before your father passed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my parents got divorced when I was pretty young and, uh, and my father and I had a much more meaningful relationship when I got older, mm. um, which is a two way street, right? Mm. You know, the, the obvious 
thing, but it's so true that as you, I can only speak for myself, I guess, but as I experience life and as I experience certain things in life, you know, as you become a man, the world becomes shades of gray. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe you used to think about a lot of things in terms of black and white and there's nuance and there's subtlety and with that comes a, a flood of empathy and understanding and forgiveness and right. all of a sudden, you know, being able to let let the parents down off Mount Olympus yeah. and yeah. Yeah. join the land of the, the yeah. human beings. Yeah. The, li <laughs> the living, the real. Yeah. No, I hate you, yeah. You know, sure. and, and so um, I'll always be grateful for that time that that we got to share together like that. Um, almost a little bit more man to man and um, yeah, but I mean, gosh, you know, we were talking before about Ozark and, you know, different jobs I've had. And I've, I've, I've felt very blessed in terms of the environments I've found myself in right. and the Amazing. people who are there. Right. Because I've, I, I, I've almost always been around good people right on. who've looked out for me right on. and who've supported and encouraged me right and not tried to fuck with me or take me down or mm. you know make me feel bad and and it's a fragile thing it's such a fragile yeah. thing especially yeah. this this business can can beat you down yeah yeah but i think you exude something which is so kind ah oh. i do i feel that from you from today from this morning something that's so genuine and i think that people respond to that, whether it's the audience or whether it's your, the people around you. You know, you can only be what you are. Mm. And I think when it's genuine, it's genuine, you know, yeah. and, and they may, people react in a way. So, but it's great that you've had more than one mentor. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. it was really, it that. was really special. You know, my high school teacher was so, Kazakoff was so passionate, such an amazing acting teacher. And also was, it was really important to him it was a public high school I went to, but it had a, a magnet performing arts program. Right, okay. So you had to audition to get in, but it, it was the school that was five minutes from my house anyway. Right on. You know? And like every Friday, we'd have to bring in a quote right up on the chalkboard. I have to bring in a vocabulary word and the definition, you know, because he was like, it was very important to him. He's like, you're going to be actors and you're going to be intelligent right. actors and you're right. going to understand vocabulary yep. and you're going to speak well. and. And he took everything so seriously. Um, and I know that is the reason I kept doing it. Mm. You know, mm. because there's just some way that mm. I'm wired that if my first experience with acting was kind of like a fun little thing to do on the side, mm. I wouldn't have done it. Mm. But he spoke something deeper within you. Yeah, that he was he, real. He, yeah, he, you know, it, he gave it, you it, structure and gave you a, a, a lead somewhere to go, an intention, discipline, yeah. a work ethic. Yeah, you know, and then and then so much about sensibility and understanding storytelling and script, and also the function of an actor came from Kevin in in college, like a like a real. A, a real understanding or at least a sort of ethos of like what your job is mm, mm. in a in a in a like a deeper sense not mm. in the literal sense so much and yeah i mean those two things i take them with me to every job right on right on like that's it um gosh well i i what is the hardest thing you have ever done we've talked uh, about that who is your great who are your fictional and real life heroes? Oh God, fictional heroes. Gandalf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Joe from Great Expectations. Oh God, yes, of course. I know. Oh, that amazing, book. yeah, amazing oh. book. Samuel from East of Eden, right the tattoo on. I have on my arm. Um, God, I have so many. William Wallace from Braveheart. Right. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you who who really shaped the 
the college age me was R.P. McMurphy from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, yeah, Nest. amazing. And Jack Nicholson's yeah. performance. I mean, I think for about three years, if it was cold enough, all I had on was a black leather yeah, jacket and, yeah, and the black beanie. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just thought, like, I remember seeing that, reading the book, seeing the movie, and thinking, that's, that's the guy. Yeah. You know? Another New Jersey man, right? Jack oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, he, yeah. he grew up not very far from where I grew up. Um, real life heroes, uh, my mom, Yeah. you know, she, she did a hell of a job working full time and raising me and my brother and, and, you know, there was nothing easy about that. Right on. <laughs> I have one of those too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah I, uh, yeah, and Eckhart Tolle. I, I oh, think yeah. he's a amazing teacher. Yeah. Talk about being present and talk about your breath as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so what is your favorite item of clothing in your wardrobe? My Adidas track pants. Oh, yeah? I have about 15 different pairs. It's really all I ever want to wear. Do you, do you, do you have the same uh, joke in America as we have in England about Adidas? Tell me. All day I dream about sex. <laughs> <laughs> or you can bring it down because you're 14 when you get a pair. Or, yeah. All day I dream about snogging, which is a nicer way of saying kissing. Kissing, right, yeah. right, right. So no, so you have the whole works, loads of them then, do you? Yeah, I just, I really only Comfort. like wearing things that are comfortable. And yeah. they're cool as well, they look good. Um, what music did you love age 13 and do you still love it now? Age 13? Yeah. Okay, so 13 was Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, um, oh, what was that band? Well, Pearl Jam. Oh, come back It'll come back band. to you. It's going to wreck me. White Zombie, Metallica. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, no, 13 was that, that period for me. Because th when I was, when I was, eighth grade would be 13. Okay. And that's literally when I bought my first CD. Okay. Right? <laughs> you know, you remember, that's when we went from cassettes to... Yeah. To, to well, I'm a vinyl man, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and my very first CD that I ever bought was Nirvana Unplugged in oh, New York. cool. Yeah, yeah. That so, cover. and yes, I love that music stuff. Right. You do? Um, oh my God. Do you God. use music to... Uh, Offspring. Offspring, okay. Band, yeah. Do you use mu music to, with your characters, when you're developing characters? Do you sort of, you know, some actors do that, they, or to get into a period piece or whatever, do you use music in that way? Or is it more just to chill and to get lost and to relax? I think sometimes definitely yeah. use music, yeah. Um, Music is one of those things with me because I also love podcasts, mm -hmm. I love audiobooks, I, kinda right. lo I love reading, I love books, I love information. That every now and then I, I start listening to music again. I'm like, what am I doing? I know, right? I need this every day. I know, right? I mean, it, it I literally know. changes my day. No, I know. It's a mood changer. It's a yes. mood shifter, isn't it? I know, yes. even yesterday, I, I was driving with my wife and she had her playlist on in the car. I was like, this is really good. <laughs> I've been driving with listening to nothing, just my own you know, torturous thoughts, when really I could be enervated by this great music. So I'm with you. Yeah. Um, whew, what's the most inspiring book that you've ever read? Inspiring? Yeah. Well, it can be your favorite book, but inspiring or favorite. Well, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle changed my life. Right? Really? A hundred percent changed my life. That book is, I, I feel like it's alive. Mm. Um, and, and I think he probably knows that it is. But um, yeah, uh, that was, you know, there's, there's the way that I was sort of taught and the way you think about things and then, and then something comes along and goes, but what if it's this? And right. you go, whoa. Right. And, and that's really disorienting at first and can be quite upsetting. But then you go, I, th I think it is this. Yeah. I always had a weird feeling like it was this. 
but never knew how to talk about them. Right, no one articulated it. it to you so clearly. Yeah. And it connected with you. Yeah. yeah it did the same with me. Ah, oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I think I read it twice immediately after I read oh. it the first time. Yes. yes. About 15 years ago. Um, what is a movie that left the lasting impression on you, aside from East of Eden? I never saw the movie. Oh, you didn't? Eden. No, okay. No, I love the book so much, I, I don't wow, even want to okay. watch the movie. Wow, okay, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. one day, I hope you do. One yeah. day. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I know, I wow. know. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah. To not go there. Incredible. Yep. I know. I know. Shrink? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting though, isn't it? To not, I mean, I get it. I get it. Well, it's like I, a reverence or... It's a reverence and also I've always loved reading and my mom was really smart and when I was younger, we had a rule that I couldn't watch a movie until I read the book. Oh, bless her. Oh, I know. And, I know. And, and, and... I was more than happy to play that game. And so I never, I never saw a movie that I thought was better than the book I just read. Right. Oh. And some of them are pretty good movies. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when, when that's your experience of things, it's like, oh, okay. I think I'd rather yeah. just stay with the book. Yeah. Um, a, a movie that made, I mean, you know, it's interesting because as an actor, there's all these movies with these incredible performances that I love. But I would say the movie that kind of blew my mind the most in the sense of, like, wow, what we can do with storytelling was The Matrix. Oh, really? Okay. And Kung Fu Hustle. Have you ever seen no, that? No, I haven't. And oh, the, really? I love Kung Fu Hustle. No. Stephen Chow from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. made it probably, I don't know, 2004 or something mm -hmm. like that. He wrote, directed, and stars Amazing. in Amazing. Okay. Incredible. It sounds like something that Tarantino would do, but is it in, along that way? Or I would be very shocked if Tarantino hadn't seen okay. it and loved it and, and maybe been a bit inspired by it. And it's funny because it's, it, to me it's like, it, it, I guess you would call it a comedy, but it's constantly shifting genres. Okay. You know? Hmm. Um, and The Matrix blew my mind because when I finally saw it, I didn't see it when it first came out, but when I finally saw it, I was like, this is, this is, I mean, um, Joseph Campbell would, right, would flip it. his yeah. top because this is like the quintessential religious story. Right. Archetypal. Dipped yeah. in really cool clothes, a lot of guns right. and some, you know, badass martial arts. Right and served up and right. everyone loved it. Right. And you're like, wow, right. like how fucking cool right. is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, in my opinion, perfect movie, like frame for frame, right. perfect. Right. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Um, what is your favorite word or saying? I mean, what do I say the most? <laughs> What's my favorite? Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I say the most is probably like, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I, I have, I, I reference have motherfucker it. on your, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, I guess I wouldn't put it past myself. So Tim Shul is from East of Eden. So okay. Tim Shul is a Hebrew word. And basically, East of Eden, you know, is an allegory for the story of Cain and Abel. Yep. So in the middle of the book, East of Eden, he has all the main characters, Samuel, Lee, they, Adam, they come together and they talk about the story of Cain and Abel. Right, yeah. As a sort of, you know, yeah. nod to what Steinbeck was doing. And there's there's a in the Bible that there that the sort of the topic of debate is after Cain kills Abel, God comes to Cain and says, Did you not think I would find out his blood cries out for me from the earth? And then he says to Cain, Go forth, do thou conquer sin. Okay. And that's like the King James Bible or right. whatever version. And they felt like that translation is God commanding Cain mm -hmm. and by extrapolation or whatever, all of us mm. to get out of there and get better, mm. you know? And then there's another translation of the story that would have God saying to Cain something like, go forth, thou shalt conquer sin, mm. which is like, you're bad now, but get out of here and eventually you'll get better, which mm. they mm. felt like sounded like a promise. 
But then they become obsessed with the operative word, and that's Timshul. So they go to these rabbis, Lee goes to these rabbis, and they debate, 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 and he comes back and he says, they felt like the truest translation would say, would have God saying to Cain, go forth, thou mayest conquer sin. Which of course also means you may not. Right, yeah. And it means it's up to you. Yeah. And then there's this beautiful passage where Steinbeck has Lee saying that he believes that Tim Schill then is man's ladder to the stars. Wow. That's that beautiful. is what makes oh that's beautiful. Right? Yeah. What makes man beautiful. And this is something that Rumi talked about as well, but it's like Rumi would say that in man is the ability to be lower than the lowest animal. Mm. The animal is innocent because mm. an animal is all instinct, mm. and so they can't mm. be blamed. Mm. Now, obviously, human beings have instinct. And he said the angel also doesn't deserve credit because mm. all the angel does is praise. Right, right, right. He said, he said it, it stuck in between is the son of man or human beings who can simultaneously be lower than the lowest animal mm. and higher than the highest angel mm. because they have to choose. Because of choice, I was going to say, yeah. Timshul. Yeah, amazing. Timshul. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. It's a Hebrew word, yeah. And so, and, and, and motherfucker as well. <laughs> um, what do you want people to say about you at your funeral? Uh... I mean, I, I don't know particularly what they might say, but I would just hope everybody's laughing and, yeah. you I know. I think they will be. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think they should. They'll be like, that big, dumb fucking laugh of his. No, man. <laughs> I think they should just, you know, broadcast that. That would just make everyone smile and celebrate. Oh, man. Really. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And final quick fire. What's your favorite car? Jeep Wrangler. What color? Black. Sports team. New York football giants. All right. Meal. Kelly and I. Mm, I love steak. I love steak. <laughs> Spoken like a proper cowboy. <laughs> Unapologetic. I Good for you. I love steak. I yeah. love steak. Yeah. I love saying, I'll tell you something about a range. We, we were in New Mexico for the first season and we got a chimenea oh, up yeah. on someone's roof and we were cooking the steaks in the chimenea. Now that thing gets hot, mm. but also it's open fire. Yeah. So you just stick that steak in there, two minutes on each side. It comes out charred, you cut it open and it really? is purple. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you've never had it better. Uh, it sounds amazing. Um, grooming products. Is that like hair? It could be anything. It could be, you know. My favorite grooming product is wearing a baseball hat. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Um, lastly, clothing label. What's your favorite clothing label? Do you have one? I guess. Um, Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> All day I dream about <laughs> snogging. All right. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much My for being pleasure. with us today, Thanks, really, Sean. and for showing your, oh, sharing your heart and your wisdom and, and your life. Really, really appreciate you being here for Mr. Feelgood.